Hello and welcome to freephotoshop.com and this week's video tutorial where I'm going to show you how to add a rainbow to a photograph and blend it in so it looks like it was actually part of the original photograph. I'm going to start off with this base image called Universal Rainbow, name that because it was taken at Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida and we're going to be adding a rainbow to this very photograph you see before you on screen. So go ahead and open up the photograph if you're going to follow along with me and the first thing I'm going to do is to come over here to the toolbox and select the gradient tool. I'll then have access to the gradient options up here in the options bar so if I go ahead and click on the gradient pattern to open up the gradient editor and this is the place by the way where we could go ahead and make our own rainbow gradient but as luck would have it there's no need and that's because we have ourselves a great rainbow gradient that ships along completely free with Adobe Photoshop and we can access it by clicking this little triangle first of all to open the wing menu and then selecting special effects and then we'll get this option to either replace the current gradients or add them to whatever we've already got inside the gradient editor and that's the one I'm going to go for so I'll click the append option and now the final gradient along the list is if I hover my cursor above it one called Russell's Rainbow perfect for what we want so I'll select it and then press the OK button next I want to activate the radial gradient option which happens to be the second one along just up here in the options bar once again and make sure the mode is set to normal and the opacity is at 100% now before I draw the gradient I'm going to create a new layer to work on so I'll come down here to the bottom of the layers palette and click this little icon here to create a new one and I may as well go ahead and name it as I'm here so I'll call it Rainbow I'm doing that by just double clicking the name of course and now I'll come across to the image itself and I'm going to position the cursor at the bottom right corner of the image then I'll click and drag and I'll drag towards the top left side probably around about 75% of the way across the screen or across the image I should say and then release the mouse and that's just what we want as it turns out and by using layers we can now hold down the control key here on the keyboard or the command key on the Mac if you're, you're working on the Macintosh side of things and that's going to give us access to the move tool temporarily whilst we're holding down that control or command key and now we can drag the layer around independent of the background image now at the moment the rainbow graphic is at the wrong angle so with the rainbow layer selected over here in the layers palette I'll come up here to the edit menu and I'll select the transform option and then I'll go ahead and select the rotate option now if I just go ahead and hold the cursor outside the transformation box click and drag I'll rotate the layer in the direction of the drag then I can drag inside the transformation box to reposition the layer and then continue rotating until we have things as we want them or as near to as we possibly can get them I'll just position that one more time and once again we have things looking the way we want them so I'll go ahead and hit the enter key on the keyboard or the green tick mark in the options bar to confirm the changes okay we now have things in position we now need to focus our efforts on blending the rainbow in with the background image so first of all we'll tackle its position relative to the horizon line because obviously the rainbow should be above the horizon and then we'll blend it into the sky to make it look a little more realistic alright so to have the rainbow appear to be behind the ride and coming up from the horizon we can work in either of two ways the first way we can work is to come back over here to the toolbox and then select the eraser tool and make sure it's the standard eraser and not the background or magic ones then we can set the brush size by using the bracket keys on the keyboard so left bracket makes the eraser smaller and right bracket makes the eraser larger now I'm not going to use this method because although it's the simplest way it's also the way that affords us the least amount of flexibility in the long run so for this example I'll stick with a fairly large brush I'm also going to make sure the brush is as soft as possible by holding down the shift key on the keyboard and hitting the left bracket key four times in a row. Now I can go ahead and just start to erase away some of this layer and of course to get things looking right I'd have to zoom in 
and work at a greater detail level, making sure, of course, I erase all aspects of the rainbow that fall on something in the foreground. Now that's one way to work, but there is, as I say, a better way to work, and that's to employ a mask to effectively mask away the portions of this layer that we don't want to see. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail here on masking because it's a huge subject, but I have got more details if you want to check them out in my series on the levels command. I take a look at video tutorial number 11 entitled Non-Destructive Editing, the Adjustment Layer, and I'll also provide a link to it from this page provided you're viewing the tutorial on the freephotoshop.com website. For what we're doing here though, I'm going to hit Ctrl Z a few times to undo those eraser brushes, and then I'm going to switch from the Layers palette to the Channels palette where I have two alpha channels that I created ready for this tutorial, and to load them up as a selection outline, which is what alpha channels are primarily there for us to be able to do, I'll control or command click the actual alpha channel I want to load up, which in this instance will be the sky channel, and once I've done that I'll switch back to the layers palette and then to load the active selection outline as a mask I'll make sure the rainbow layer is active and then I'll just click this little mask icon at the bottom of the layers palette and check that out. So I've gone ahead and masked everything that falls into the foreground of the rainbow and in fact if I alt or option click the mask you can see that we're only allowing the rainbow to be seen in the white areas and where there's black we're actually hiding the rainbow layer. Okay I'll alt or option click it once more to return to the image preview and remember there's much more detail on masking inside that video tutorial inside the levels series that I produced here for freephotoshop.com so make sure you check that out to see how to produce and save an alpha channel. Now one of the advantages of masking is that we can now move the rainbow layer about independent of the masked area but there's one additional step we need to make before actually being able to successfully do that because as you can see if we try to move it around now we'll move everything on that layer including the mask so I'll hit Control or Command Z to put that back to move the layer independent of the mask, we need to come in between the layer and the mask in the layers palette and click this little link icon to remove the link between the layer and the mask. Now we need to click the layer to ensure we have it selected and not the mask. Now I can hold down the control or command key to access the move tool on the fly and reposition the layer to wherever I want it inside this image. And that looks pretty nice there, I think you'll agree. Now finally we want to blend the rainbow into the background so once again we can make sure we have the rainbow layer active and then change the blending mode of the layer from normal to screen and that's going to lighten the effect. Finally I'm going to change the opacity of the layer to something around the 50% mark and we're done. I'd say that looks pretty good. As always feel free to play around with the effects to see if you can come up with something better. Maybe you might try a different size gradient another blend mode, or even a different angle for the rainbow itself. The more you play, the better you'll get at creating rainbows and generally creating effects inside Adobe Photoshop. Well, thanks as always for joining me here at freephotoshop.com. Thanks for watching and see you next time.